Hey guys, this is Thogard on the PC and a server, and I am bringing to you my stamina work build. Uh, this build is a result of a long trial and error process. I've tried quite a few sets, uh, some of which worked, some of which didn't. Um, I've also tried quite a few skill loadouts, just trying to really fine tune the resource management with various scenarios. And what I was really trying to do is build something that would be effective in virtually all types of PvP. Um, this build it accomplishes that for almost all. Uh, the one exception would be dueling. It's an okay dueling build, and I can beat a lot of people in duels using this, but I'm never going to be the top tier uh, dueler, and I will explain why in a second. Um, let's go into the items first, so I can give you a sense of, of what we're working with here. Um, when we're looking at the item loadout, the first thing you'll notice is blood spawn. Uh, heavy. Heavy blood spawn. And that's obviously there because it's just such a strong set for the Warden. Uh, Warden's a burst class and a heal class, and if you've got Dawnbreaker and trees set up, then Bloodspawn gives you either more burst or more heal, depending on what you need. The resource is also there uh, because Warden is vulnerable to getting burst down um, in between its uh, healing, and the extra resources really help with that. Um, the other sets that I'm running are Veiled Heritance, and that's a five-piece. Uh, I've got that active on both bars. Uh, Veiled Heritance, very strong set. Uh, the two through four piece, very, very effective. Um, especially that third line item, the physical resistance, really goes a long way to helping out with mitigating a lot of the melee damage, especially from Night Blades, who we would otherwise be very vulnerable to. Um, the other set we're running is Spriggans. We don't have that active on both bars, though. Uh, Spriggans, we have active on a two hand bar uh, through use of a Spriggan Greatsword, which is Nern Honed. Um, we also are using a double dot poison on that bar. Um, on the back bar, we're using tried and true master dual wield. Uh, that dot there is is really uh, effective in adding some pressure that the stamina work kit would otherwise be lacking in. Um, when we look at the traits, uh, virtually everything is impenetrable um, as it should be. Uh, I have well fitted on boots. That's just there out of habit. It doesn't have to be, and honestly, that could probably be impenetrable too. Uh, just for some extra uh, defense and some extra protection against being burst down. Um, when we're looking at the items, uh, the weapons, we're looking at an Urn Honed uh, Masters main hand and an Infused offhand. Uh, on the weapon enchants, we've got Absorb Stamina on the main, and we are looking at Infused Weapon Damage on the offhand. Um, neither one of those is very uh, outside of the box, so to speak. The Absorb Stamina is one of the most efficient weapon chance you can use. And because we are already going to have to file through another source, which I'll get into in a second, uh, we don't necessarily need to run a Disease Enchant here. Um, and again, on the main hand, we're looking at a Spriggan's Great Sword of Nern Honed, um, just to get that extra damage and that extra burst. And on that, we have a Double Dot Poison, again, to increase the pressure. But when we look at the skill loadout, we're looking at uh, an interesting loadout, and this is kind of what makes this build a little bit more try-hard uh, than a lot of the other builds that you'll find out there. Um, on the main bar, we're looking at Corrupting Pollen, we're looking at Sub Assault, we're looking at Dizzy Swing, that's going to be the CC, we're looking at Forward Momentum, and then also on the main bar, we're looking at Ice Fortress. So again, to go over the main bar, we're looking at Corrupting Pollen, Sub Assault, Dizzy Swing, Ford Momentum, and Ice Fortress. Uh, the ultimate, as is tradition with pretty much every stamina DPS, uh, we're looking at Dawnbreaker of Spiting. Um, the interesting thing about the main bar and the thing that kind of draws attention is Corrupting Pollen. It's something that you don't really see in a lot of stamina builds. Um, I've actually been using it for the last two months almost uh, religiously, and I have found uh, no problem sustaining the mag regen uh, needed for corrupted pollen. I can have. Uh, I've I've really never been in a situation where I need it, but don't have it as long as I'm strategic with the use. And I'm going to get into that in a minute as we talk about how this build plays out. On the back bar, we're looking at rending slashes, soothing spores, shimmering shield, resolving vigor, and there's the execute right there. Steel tornado, A.K.A. the spin to win. Um, we're also having our heal back here, the uh, healing trees, the healing thicket. Because what warden build is complete without the trees? What this back bar is really designed for is it's, it's the place where you can start off and end 
uh, many of your fights. And this build, I call it the Trihardis because it's not exactly an intuitive build. You know, we have healing and pressure on both bars. So in order to play at this build, you're going to have to be comfortable bar swapping. Uh, you're going to have your rending slashes here. That's going to be the snare and the dot. Not just the dot, but the snare too. That's really going to help apply a lot of pressure and make your dizzy swings easier to land. Um, you've also got uh, defenses here through the Soothing Spores and the Shimmering Shield, and also your Executes here. So a lot of fights you'll start off on the two-hand bar with your Sub Assault, then you'll get your Rending Slashes on the target to snare them, and you'll get your Dizzy Swing up, and then if they're in Execute range, spend a win to get them out. Or you could, after getting your Dizzy Swing off, lay down your Corrupting Pollen, and then hop over to spend a win build. But there is a lot of bar swapping involved, and I have it that way for a reason. First and foremost, Spindowin's just really strong right now. With everyone being a fucking roly-poly running around, just roll dodging everything, you need a way to finish them off that's not Reverse Slice. Reverse Slice is totally roll dodgeable. What everyone does is as soon as they get into Execute range, everyone just fucking roll dodges every fucking time. And I've been running uh, Spindowin as my Execute, specifically because I just really hate Nightblades, and uh, I, just, I really like just... Mm, just, just executing the shit out of them, and uh, Spindle One has been helping me do that for the last six months now. Um, ever since they made it so that you can't roll dodge it, uh, two patch cycles ago. So I've just really loved it, but I still really wanted to have a stun, and I wanted to run Dizzy Swing because back in the day I used to be a Dizzy Swing uh, stamina. So what I tried to do here was combine the two strategies and. It does play a little bit awkwardly at first. It takes a little bit of time to get used to, and I'd be lying if I said that there weren't times when I was trying to execute somebody, and I ended up spamming my Ice Fortress instead because it's the same bar or the same slot, you know? So mistakes do happen, and if you're dealing with bar swap lag, you have to be comfortable with uh, working around it. That being said, I used to play a Torx Pact build, which would entail bar swapping on every single uh, animation. So I am kind of used to having to swap cancel uh, virtually every skill, and I have gotten used to it. Um, what this does is it just fills in the gaps inside of a lot of the stamina kit. Um, the Defile, very strong. It's also a pretty, pretty sizable heal, too. Um, when we're looking at it, it's not going to be affected by Rally because of the mag ability. But my delve for this is 5567, which means as long as you're inside of it when it pops, you're getting a nice 2.2k heal. Uh, for you as well as your allies, and if any of your allies hit the synergy, the heal over time is where it's really at with, with this ability. Keep in mind that that hot's going to scale their stats, not yours, which makes it even stronger. Um, this build is very strong for GVG as well. Um, one of the major things you'll notice is that, you know, the mag regen is corrupting pollen sustainable, and it is as long as you're smart about it. You're not going to open up a fight by throwing it out there. You know, you just, you can't. Like, in in my opinion, you really don't want to start using it until you get your target around 50%. Because you don't want to start throwing it down until they start healing it. Um, but keep in mind that you're going to get them down pretty low pretty fast due to the fact that you've got Master Dual Wield here, and you've got your Sub Assault, and your Dizzy Swing. And you've got Double Dot Poisons as well, which is going to put a lot of pressure on. So once you see those Poisons hit, once you've got the Master Dual Wield lead on them, and you start lining up that Sub Assault, and then the Dizzy Swing combo. What I like to do is as soon as the Dizzy Swing lands, while they've got the Poisons and the Master Duel with Lead on them, as soon as the Dizzy Swing lands while they're in the air, unless they're in Execute range, that's when I put down the Corrupting Pollen. Now, what's the downside of spamming Corrupting Pollen? Because it's really not that expensive. If you spam too much Corrupting Pollen, you're not going to be able to put Shimmering Shield up. The good news is that Shimmering Shield is usually used against Mag users. So a lot of times when you're fighting a mag user, you're not really going to need to worry about the defile because in that situation, you're mostly going to be fighting their damage shields, not them. That could change next patch, but for now, it's usually a situation of gauging you know, what's going to be more effective, the defile or the shimmering shield, and there aren't a lot of players that you need both up 100% of the time on. Um, but if you do need both up, then just be very strategic with the shimmering shield. And my advice would be to treat it as a buff for the major heroism rather than as a damage prevention and use your spores, vigor, and forward momentum as countering uh, for the damage rather than trying to absorb all of it with your Shimmering Shield because then you'll find yourself out of Magicka and unable to apply that file, which is so critical in finishing people off.
So again, this is a very uh, a, a very balanced way to build out the ward. You know, we're filling in a lot of the gaps by adding that pressure through the Master Duel's Bleed. We've also got extra healing and the file. Um, it can be a bit awkward to get used to at first, but I guarantee you, once you've been playing it for uh, a few days, it's going to feel very natural. Um, this build you can bring in virtually any situation. If you're inside of a GVG, my recommendation would be dropping Shimmering Shield unless it's a mag focus group and replacing that with Caltrops, thanks to the new GVG Caltrops meta uh, that uh, is uh, predominant. I, I don't know who was responsible for that. Uh, I think that's kind of cheesy. Like You'd have to be a really shitty group if you just spam Caltrops and expect other stamp groups to walk into it. You know, it's just not a skillful ability. But um, yeah, whatever group started, that's just the worst. And um, uh, you know, it's just it's the new meta now. So uh, whoever wants to uh, do this build in GBGs, just replace it uh, the Shimmering Shield with Caltrops, and you're good to go. When it comes to the Mundus, uh, what we're using? Oh, my food dropped. Um, when it comes to the Mundus, we're using the Steed. Or, no, sorry, the Serpent. I get them mixed up. We're using the Stamina Regen uh, Mundus. Um, for food, I'm using Dubious. If you want to have even better stats than what I'm rocking, you can rock the gold version, which is going to be better in, in all senses. Um, the way this looks right now, with no extra buffs at all, everything down, you're looking at 25k HP, 30k stamina, um, and that's going to be moving up as you get your rewards, minor toughness in there to boost that up a little bit higher. Um, when we're looking at the, uh, tr the enchants on the armor, we're looking at tristat on everything. And that's because you do want to start off with a lot of mag. Um, we're looking at tristat on everything. In this build, I'm running two swift on the jewelry and one triune on the jewelry. I'm running one stamina region armor or uh, jewelry glyph and two weapon damage jewelry glyphs. Um, You'll notice I don't have an animal ability on my back bar, so there is a bit of a disparity in my stamina recovery. I'm at around 1900 on my front bar and around 1738 on my back bar. That being said, I do like the heavy attack with the back bar just because it's a lot easier to land dual wield heavy attacks due to the fact that they tend to have a 360 degree LOS, whereas the two handed one is more of a um, 180 or even narrower than that, I think, uh, LOS um, for the hit to hit range. So. I do like the dual wield uh, heavy. It also hits a little bit harder. You can start off a lot of fights that way after putting on sub assault. Heavy, do that, and then you can start your uh, dizzy swing combo. And then while they're in the air, corrupting pollen, and then bars up again for some spin to win. When I go into no CP, one of the things I like to do is replace corrupting with leeching binds. Um, I do this for two reasons. First, it gives you a little bit of extra protection. Uh, it gives you a little bit of extra defense that can really help with uh, the extra, um, or I guess the the lack of extra HP and extra resistances because of the fact that it's no CP and everyone has a higher or a faster time to kill and higher damage output. Uh, it seems like so. I like that for that reason, but also if you can throw this up on an ally who's taking damage, you can really trigger that ward passive that gives you extra stamina every time you heal a teammate. So that alone, in my experience, has been enough to offset the lower stamina regen and uh, magicka regen that you would have inside of the OCP environment. So I actually don't make any changes to my jewelry enchants at all when I do battlegrounds on this tune. Not that I do a lot of them, it's like a 40 minute long wait time because this guy's anymore is too high. Um, when it comes to the CP, I don't want to talk too much about the CP because um, I actually didn't do the CP on this guy. One of my friends, uh, Lyser, um, actually assisted me with the CP, and he, he has so many amazing ideas when it comes to the CP that I don't want to basically take, you know, his his ideas and his work and you know throw it out there as my own. Um, message him in game. It's at Lyser with two R's on the end. L Y S E R R. Um, he is the best person in the game when it comes to CP. He's also an amazing dueler and an amazing small scaler and an amazing 1VXer. Uh, so I hope one of these days he does come out with a 
uh, CP allocation video because he's very effective, very strategic with how he does it. Um, but until he does, I don't want to steal his thunder and uh, put his, his ideas out as, as my own. So um, until he makes a video, um, I'm going to keep the CP on the down low. But um, when it comes to no CP, yeah, all we do is we swap out the corrupting, which can't really be stacked up by Bethel because I do run a lot of Bethel on this guy. Um, we swap out the corrupting for the uh, leeching vines, which uh, helps out quite a lot. <laughs> 